Sunday night recap for week four. And as we record this before the Sunday night game, your two top scores are both Lions. Jared Goff and TJ Hawkinson. 179 yards for TJ Hawkinson. Welcome to the show, everybody. Just heard something very inspirational before we went on. Dave was talking about one of his leagues. He said he was one in five last year, and he turned it around, and he even won a playoff game. Didn't win the league, but Dave, I was very uh, filled with hope uh, from your your quick story there. Yeah, I'm filled with hope too because it's a league where I've been battered with injuries and didn't go heavy on wide receivers, and I had a, the best week I could have had with my lineup, and I went up against Bob Harris, who some of you guys might have heard of, and he's having the best week of anybody in the league. <laughs> Don't you hate it when you play the team that scores the most points in your league? That's what happened to me. That's, so I'm looking at 0 4 unless Mike Evans has like an amazing night. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Dave. But you can all right. You know what? It's it's a long season. It's the advice I would give everybody is even if you're starting off bad now, it's how you finish. And you got to keep trying. Got to keep pushing. That's what fantasy is all about. Try to have fun with it. All right. Well, Heath is here as well. We're going to give our biggest winner, biggest losers. We're going to talk about it. You know, it doesn't really feel like McCaffrey last year, but this is crazy. I mean, the number one overall pick might have a high ankle sprain, might miss some time, and he's been garbage anyway for the last three weeks. Uh, Jonathan Taylor got hurt. Javante Williams got hurt. We'll update you on all that. Heath, you in a good mood tonight? Oh, I could not be in a better mood. Everything is wonderful. I'd like to thank Alvin Kamara for... Um, taking this morning off because I had Miles Sanders on my bench and uh, there's no Ooh. way he would have scored as many points as Miles Sanders did anyway. So thank you for resting Alvin Kamara. All right, then if you're in such a good mood, give us the biggest winner of week four. The biggest winner was Brees Hall. He absolutely dominated work in the running game and we didn't see all of the targets disappear. Now he only caught two of his six targets for 12 yards, but he got six targets in a game when Zach Wilson threw 36 times, that gives me hope that he could be a 15 touch, five target back rest of season. And with his talent, that makes him a must start top 18 running back rest of year. Dave, give me the biggest loser of week four. If I give you the biggest loser of week four, then I'm taking one of Heath's losers. Do it. Do it. Kyle Pitts. Mm-hmm. One catch for 25 yards on four targets on a team where the quarterback only throws 19 times. There was a point in this game. I can't believe the Browns lost this. The Falcons ran the ball 14 plays in a row. And 14 scored 14 plays drive. in a row. What's up? And and went like 80 yards and scored. Yeah. So, like, it was amazing that they did that. But I wrote about it. I remember writing about it after their preseason game that Marcus Mariota was making me nervous for, for the pass catchers in the offense. And then Drake London had a couple of really good games in the regular season. This was not one of them, so he's kind of a loser too. But the, the Kyle Pitts that we drafted is supposed to be getting nine targets per game. He's supposed to be catching six or seven of those targets. He's supposed to be getting 80 or 90 yards. He's supposed to actually score a touchdown. He's, he's not scoring. He's miserable. How do you start this guy? How do you keep starting this guy? You know how you keep starting this guy? Because another loser of mine is Dalton Schultz, and he didn't even have any fantasy points today. Well, so as bad of a loser as Kyle Pitts was, at least he did better than Dalton Schultz. There, the, two losers for the price of one. The The good yeah. news for Kyle Pitts oh, is that he sorry. gets Tampa Bay next week and then San Francisco the week after that. So <laughs> everything should get a lot better what do for you, him. You, you, what do you do now? Do you just keep you shrug your shoulders and you start them? Doesn't it feel like you're, you know, taking a hatchet to your big toe every time you do it? Well, it's crazy I, what I was what, going to say going that I want to do is um, inspired by Dave Richard, a pep talk he gave me this morning. I'm going to take my L on DJ Moore and while at the same time taking my victory lap on Najee Harris and Kyle Pitts and Gabe Davis. Okay. Ooh. Well, all right. Is I- it? Hope you're wrong about Gabe Davis, but it's like everyone else is wrong. <laughs> yeah, about Gabe it's Davis. it's no. tough to take victory laps on guys who haven't played well through the first four weeks of the season. Well, he was anti Gabe Davis. Cool no, that's what I was saying. Sure, I was sure. yes, you were. Yes, I didn't draft a single Gabe Davis, but then I just traded for him this past week, and now I'm now I'm on Team Gabe Davis. Did and I how many weeks will it. it take for Gabe Davis to match this week's production from Jamal Williams and Alan Lazard? 
that's who I traded oh. for for Gabe Davis. Yeah, um, six. I, I also let's be fair. I also got Zamir White. Six. Um, so, was, that, was that in the IDP league? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that was the league that I played you this week. Oh, great. Well, you're welcome. Um, I was going to check our score. Yeah, I think you're I'm checking. Play. I'm checking. I am beating you currently by 32, but we both have four players remaining. I have a quarterback at least. You have so. Matthew Stafford, Julio Jones, Aaron Donald, and Jalen Ramsey left. Yeah. All right, I have, have this. congratulations. Okay. I have Tom Brady, Clyde Edwards Alaire, Chris Gosh. Godwin, and Travis Kelsey left. If I don't make the trade, I, 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 bear, I don't think I'm going to win. I don't think I win if I don't. I definitely don't. Win. I seriously hate myself. I just I, that was such a bad trade. I hate myself forever. All right. Anyway, those are your biggest winners and biggest losers. Shouldn't you at least feel a little bit of of positivity that you helped a friend? Yes, yeah. you helped welcome. a friend, Adam. You're very Thank welcome, you. Dave. All right. So let's I'll talk about uh, this new segment called. <laughs> The number one overall pick might have a high ankle sprain and more big news. So Jonathan Taylor oh, left yeah. with the ankle injury. They have a Thursday game against Denver. Uh, let's say he's out. What does the backfield look like? Who Naeem Hines is 75% rostered. I mean, is there even a waiver claim to make here, Dave? Uh, yeah, I think, it's De- I think it's Deion Jackson. Uh, I know he's on the roster. I'm not sure if they've got anybody on the practice squad that would leapfrog Deion Jackson for – splitting the workload with Naheem Hines. But I don't think I'd feel real good starting either of those Colts running backs. Um, and it's not necessarily because of the matchup. I just I, – I don't love what I saw from this offense for much of the game. They, Matt they Ryan's were a mess. super bad. <laughs> but, well, look, it's hard to call him I, – I agree with you, but he completed 27 of 37 passes for 356 yards and two touchdowns. It's hard to say you're bad when you put up those kinds of numbers, but it, it wasn't pretty. It, it wasn't the best game, and he really did start to turn it on. Honestly, it was all like second half, if you ask me. Um, but it's it's an ugly offense. The offensive line isn't playing to what we How thought. How does it he would throw be. for 356 yards and Paris Campbell catches three passes for 31? Or Paris Campbell. Michael Paris Pittman. Campbell. Yeah, Paris that's Campbell who you was better than Michael Pittman. Alec Pierce was twice as good, well, yardage-wise. Pittman will be on the worryometer, but let's stick to the topic here okay. of, of the, the, topic? Colts, the Colts' backfield. You know, do you think Naeem Hines? Dave said he's not a practice squad. Do you, do you think Naeem Hines becomes a, at least a flex? Oh, uh, so high end flex, low end number two running back. Okay. 70. Oh, you know who they've got? Hold on, hold on. You know who they've got on their practice squad? I'm glad I looked. Philip Lindsay. Oh. So mm-hmm. that might be who comes in and takes some work with Naheem Hines and maybe with Deion Jackson. I don't know how much work Deion Jackson's actually going to get, but that that that's where I think they'd go. I think Philip Lindsay would be in the mix. So we can all enjoy that. Jonathan Taylor had 20 carries for 42 yards, and he also fumbled. And now he has three straight games with 71 or fewer rushing yards. And that, that actually did happen in four of the first five games in 2020 or 2021. Got off to a pretty slow start, then he went nuts. But it's been uh, it's been rough. It's been certainly rough. Alvin and Kamara if it, was in. If it's a high, hold on, hold on. If it's a, I'm sorry to interrupt. If it's a high ankle sprain for Taylor, then I, I don't I don't know how good he'll be when he comes back from it. Uh, Alvin Kamara was inactive, and that screwed a lot of people. He was started in 38 percent of leagues on CBS Sports. Uh, so really, Did, nothing you can do about that unless the commissioner wants to be nice. 38 percent. Whoa, no. Do not put commissioners yeah. in that position. We already did. On don't, I mean, at this point, it's a little late. But I, don't I think, don't text me and say I accidentally started someone who didn't play. Can you please put him in my lineup? If you live in California, that's being rude. And it's six thirty in the morning, and you're asleep, and he's inactive, completely as a surprise. I don't think it's unreasonable before the one o'clock game or before the ten a.m. local their game start to say, "Hey, I didn't know," and the commissioner can can make that. I think it's okay, fine. Adam. Yeah. No. Let's say I was playing you and I did that and I overslept because I'm on the West Coast and I had some fish tacos the night before that were bad and I missed it and Camaro was in my lineup and I called you asking for forgiveness and I'm playing you. Do you let me off the hook? Do you let me put in Miles Sanders? Yeah, probably. 
obviously would have to be before. You are a sucker. You are a sucker, and you are too nice, and you still made a great trade. It's the only. Thank you very much. It's the only scenario. The London scenario is the only scenario where this, this is even in play. It was really weird. He was not supposed to be inactive, and it's super early in the morning for people. I I get it. Um, Javante Williams, though, he left on crutches. Melvin Gordon also, well, he was on crutches after the game. Melvin or- Gordon also got hurt, so, but he came back. He <laughs> came back. Um, Mike Boone, Boone had the most yes. playing time after the Javante. Did, did Melvin get hurt, or did he fumble again and got benched? Oh, he got hurt, and then he, maybe both, but he definitely got hurt briefly. Okay. Well, yeah, the Javante yeah. news probably is not going to be good. Yeah, that's a, it's a huge deal, obviously, and could be enormous for Melvin Gordon and less so for Mike Boone, but he'll be on the waiver wire for you. And Traylon Burks left in the second half, and and that could be a serious injury for Traylon Burks. And Robert Woods is available in more than 30% of CBS Sports Leagues. He did have a good game in Week 3, and he caught a touchdown in Week 4. All right, so we'll tell you more about the, the injuries. Chris Towers has you covered in the newsletter. Go to cbssports.com slash newsletters, and you can sign up. We have many different newsletters, but the Fantasy Football Today one will certainly be of interest to you. Updated injury stuff, um, waiver wire stuff, everything. Starts, sits, Chris's rankings, uh, content from Dave, Jamie, and Heath. It's, it's a great newsletter and really in-depth, and you're going to love it. It's Obviously, it's free, and it goes right to your inbox. Go to cbssports.com slash newsletters. Let's do the worryometer, 0 to 10. Zero, not worried at all. Ten, freaking out. Gabe Davis, one catch on three targets. Not a great day for Josh Allen, but still, one catch on three targets for Gabe Davis. Zero to ten. Four. Here's the thing I don't understand. I keep hearing Gabe Davis is hobbled. Gabe Davis is not 100%. And then you look at the snap counts, and he never comes off the field. He's playing every snap, playing more than Stephon Diggs. They're not resting him or treating him like he's hurt, but he's not doing anything. Zero if to ten. If he's hurt, why is he playing every snap? Zero to ten. Um, well, I don't have any Gabe Davis, so I'm not that worried about it. <laughs> um, no, justifying his ADP, I think he's an eight. Okay. Start him next week against Pittsburgh. Got Pittsburgh stinks. Um, yeah, you well. should. They're, they're, is their secondary worse than the Ravens? Yeah, why does everybody think the Ravens' secondary is so bad? They had one game where everyone was hurt. Like They're pretty healthy now except for who Fuller, who they lose for the year uh, a couple weeks ago, whatever it is. I mean, they're pretty healthy now. But this was obviously – like the only thing it seems that can slow down these elite quarterbacks is when they all play in bad weather on the same weekend. <laughs> and that happened. Uh, this was not a great passing yep. game. Uh, you know, Baltimore had terrible weather. Philadelphia had bad weather. Um, obviously, Daniel Jones and Justin Fields slowed down by the weather. But I, I, I am not concerned about Gabe Davis as a boom bust number three wide receiver. And if you start three wide receivers, you should probably start him because he's going to have some weeks where he has huge point totals. But he's also going to have multiple more weeks where he scores single digit fantasy points. All right. Worryometer on Rashad Bateman. Same game, three catches, 17 yards on six targets. He's now had between four and seven targets in every game, no more than four catches. I mean, he couldn't be more boomer bust. Worryometer on Rashad Bateman. He got hurt, so but came I'm, back. I'm, he, he didn't play in the fourth quarter. I'm I put it at six because if he isn't fully healthy, I don't know how fast he'll be, and that's really been like all of his big plays have been because of speed. But he continues to make mistakes out there. I think he had another drop today before he got hurt. So six is the number for me on the worryometer. Five, yeah. All right, Rashad Bateman. Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper is a worryometer. One catch for nine yards. Three. Four. Remember, but like this is what Amari Cooper has done for most of his career. He's probably going to have a stretch mm-hmm. of a month where he's a top five wide receiver, and then he's going to have another game like this. He was coming off back-to-back games with 101 yards, and yeah. you thought, good. I, I don't know if he was shadowed by A.J. Terrell, but... Um, it's probably we'll have to go back and look at that, but one catch for nine yards against the Falcons is pretty disappointing. Uh, Michael Pittman, three catches, 31 yards on six targets with Matt Ryan throwing for a bunch of yards. Michael <laughs> Pittman, zero to 10. Two. I'm, tr- I'm, I'm trying to decide if I'm as nervous about him as I am Rashad Bateman. And I just don't think I am because I think one of the things the Colts can do 
is start leaning on him again. And I don't know why they didn't do it in this game. So what'd you give Heath? A two? Two. I think that's a good number. Uh, he had two touchdowns. But two, he had one that was just out of bounds. I think two in a row where he was just out of bounds on either consecutive plays or two out of three. So he almost caught a touchdown, Michael Pittman. And Dalton Schultz. Let's say worryometer for Dalton Schultz when Dak Prescott gets back, which could be next week, maybe more likely week six. But he has been absolutely horrible the last two games with Cooper Rush. A combined two catches for 18 yards on seven targets. So zero to ten on Schultz with Dak Prescott. Five. With Dak Prescott? Uh-huh. Two. Oh. Five spy hard, Dave. Why a five? Because I think Dak Prescott could also enjoy having what appears to be three capable wide receivers at his disposal. Lamb is good. Gallup made a nice touchdown. Nice first game back for him. And Noah Brown hasn't gone away. So unless Dak really has strong feelings for Dalton Schultz, uh, you could be looking at a massive bust at tight end. I think think you're talking to 10 out of 12 fantasy managers in every league having a bust at tight end. Not maybe not quite, but how about Mark Andrews today? Jeez. He had as many points as Kyle Pitts in PPR. Uh, All right. So Dalton Schultz struggled today and, Darren Waller wasn't great either. It's two games in a row for him where he's been under 25 yards. Um, tight end is tight end. Uh, what was I going to say here? Oh, Noah Brown. Noah Brown left with a, with a neck injury, so we'll keep an eye on that. All right, that was the worryometer. Here's the hooray-ometer. You know, hooray, like, like worry, hooray, kind of, sort of. Uh, I don't even know how to calibrate it. I don't know what a zero or a 10 means, but these guys are on the hooray-ometer. Jared Goff, 41 points. Geno Smith, 34 points in that game. That was the bonanza. Uh, TJ Hawkinson set a tight, uh, Lions record for tight end receiving yards. He had eight catches for 179 yards and two touchdowns. Austin Eckler, huge game for him. 109 total yards, six catches, three touchdowns for Eckler. Alan Lazard, 116 yards. Damian Pierce, a 75-yard touchdown run and six catches. They only went for eight yards. But... Uh, Pierce was great. Lazard was great. Eckler was great. Hawkinson was great. Geno Smith was great. Jared Goff was great. Uh, Heath, sum up the hooray-ometer for us. I don't care about the quarterbacks. Um, it was fantastic for TJ Hawkinson. He took advantage of the situation he had. I'm sorry he has to play the Patriots next week. Um, hmm. Austin Eckler, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh it was nice that uh, Damon Pierce had some catches. I'm not sure after that type of production he's going to see that again. <laughs> but <laughs> it was nice they let him try. And the Green Bay wide receiver situation, what a roller coaster with Romeo Dobbs. Like he had the fumble early and then they just didn't throw the ball to him for half. And then he had a touchdown and then he almost had a second touchdown. And it turns out he dropped the touchdown, so they're probably never throwing to him again. Um, I'd say it's back to maybe even odds as to who the number one wide receiver for Aaron Rodgers is going to be next week. Dave, anything to say about this group here? Pierce, Lazard, Eckler, TJ Hawkinson, Geno Smith, Jared Goff, and someone said, hey, what about Josh Jacobs? He's coming up later in the show. Yeah, he's a winner. Jacobs is a big-time winner. Second week in a row, he's had a lot of targets, So, and he had a great game. That kind of obvious that he's a winner. Goff and Geno Smith have played themselves into being streamable quarterbacks and definitely bi-week quarterbacks. We're a week away from the buys kicking in, you're going to need these guys. And if you, if you've got a stud quarterback, go, go see who these two are playing. When well, your stud quarterbacks by week. Uh, yeah. Um, the, that's, that's why I said, I, I don't care. And I wasn't trying to dismiss them, but golf is at new England next week. Geno Smith's at new Orleans next week. Right. Um, so I don't think next week is the week to go after <laughs> these guys. <laughs> gonna, I'm thinking gonna, yeah. golf is bad because it's new England, then a buy, then Dallas. So that's three weeks where you're probably not going to sure. want to Jared Goff. No, but I, I'm not talking about just Everybody's, the next three weeks. I'm talking yeah. about, you know, there's, there's quarterbacks that have buys lately. Yeah. Maybe I traded Goff for Jared Goff. Goff. Match. I traded for Jared Goff last night and then I dropped him because he was the other part of the trade. <laughs> so I'm on fire. Uh, but just, just awful, awful stuff. All right. That was the hooray-ometer. Uh, any names for the early waiver wire here? Early look at the waiver wire. Any big names to know? Yeah, it's going to be really ugly. I guess Mike Boone would be up there. 
because if Javante's out for a while, Boone will split that work with Melvin. We know that Melvin's got some fumbleitis, and he's old, so he could always have an injury. Uh, does Philip Lindsay enter the conversation at all? If he's I the guy, not. I hope not either, but people are going to be desperate for running back help. What about Caleb Huntley? Yeah, or Tyler Algier. Who, so, Patterson, I don't know what happened there. Patterson only played six snaps in the second half, one snap in the fourth quarter, so something could be up with him. Well, he was Al questionable would be this the morning. One I'd want. He was. Yeah. And then he had a monster game before he got hurt. Uh, Corey Davis. I'm, I'm looking at a list that Chris provided in some internal notes. I don't know. If he's Corey Davis see. is a good one because he was Zach Wilson's guy when they were both healthy last year, and he was Zach Wilson's guy today. Yeah. Alec Pierce has had two encouraging games in a row. Um, yeah. All right. I, I think, I don't know. Anybody want to go to the hope for Kadarius Tony or Wandale Robinson to play? That's Someone's at your own play, risk. Play with I, for that team. No, I, I picked <laughs> them up. Um, last week and then dropped him on Saturday. I'll probably do it again this week. <laughs> I don't think the Giants threw for 90 yards in this game. They threw I wonder if Mo Alley Cox gets 82. a lot of attention. Oh, probably. Oh, he shouldn't. He shouldn't. No. <laughs> last I, week was I mean, a lot of Right. Exa- well, the difference is that Mo Alley Cox plays more and is used beyond inside of 10 yards for the Colts. And he, he had six targets, six catches, 85 yards. He doesn't do that all the time. But he might get some attention. I'm not saying you should do it. I'm not saying you should run out and make a play for Ali Cox. But I do think that he at least deserves a look. They're, they're going to need help on offense if Jonathan Taylor isn't there. Ooh. They're going to need to recalibrate the whole thing. All right, that's an early look at the waiver wire. We're going to take a break. When we come back, a segment called Take That, Adam. Then more news and notes, then winners and losers, and we'll get into every single game from Sunday. We'll be right back on Fantasy Football Today. I heard Heath go, ooh, and now I see who's winning the Sunday night game. Oh, that's right. Heath, rooting for those Chiefs. All right, I'm DVRing. I'm, I'm excited enough about the game where I'm DVRing to watch it the right way. We welcome you back here. Like I said, segment called Take That, Adam. Crapping on Jamal Williams all, we, all year long. That's like all I do. He's and never he had goes, an explosive play. This was the biggest, the longest run of his career, of his career, over 700 carries now. 51-yard touchdown run. Now, I did love him in fantasy. I, we, Everybody did. So I'm not going to say that. But I did not know that he had a 51-yard run in the, you know, within his I, capabilities. Good for him and a huge game for Jamal Williams. In fairness, I'm not sure that you can say you loved someone in fantasy when you traded them as part of a package for Gabe Davis. Well, obviously, I liked Gabe Davis quite a bit, but I loved I loved him this week. I said, uh, I said I would start him and Khalil Herbert over Christian McCaffrey this morning. I got half of that right, <clears throat> so I liked Jamal Williams quite a bit. But he obviously is a must start until further notice, right? I mean, even at New England next week. Sure. Yep. More news and notes. I'm not sure if everybody caught what happened with the Giants' quarterback situation, but it was pretty ridiculous. Daniel Jer- Jones hurt his ankle. Um, then Terod Taylor came in and got a concussion, and Jones came back in, and they basically went wildcat uh, for a bit. <clears throat> but hopefully uh, Jones can get back out there for a London game against Green Bay. If Daniel Jones is a surprise and active at 9.30 in the morning, let your, commis- let your commissioner make a lineup adjustment for you. That's when the opponents will say, no, no, let him have him. Let him put him in the lineup. It's great. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, Kenny Pickett replaced Mitchell Trubisky. So, yep. you know, I don't know a team that has a harder stretch of games coming up than the Steelers. They not, can't start him next week. I'm not that familiar with their schedule, but with every team's schedule, but Buffalo, Tampa Bay, Miami, Philadelphia, three of them on the road, then a bye, then the Saints, then the Bengals. It really, David, makes you I, wonder how much – oh, Heath, it makes you wonder how much you can trust anyone on the Steelers. Honestly, anyone on the Steelers. I, I will just say that the kid has moxie. Um, he showed that, but that was pretty much all he showed. And the Bills might break him behind this offensive line. Like, don't do that to him. Uh, I don't know that he can go back at this point. But the kid has moxie. That is, uh, that's an an old person. Like that, you kind of sound old when you say that. I right? kind of am old. <laughs> all right, what does that make me? I'm older than you. Yeah, you're old. Yeah, I'm I'm uh, old AF. Are... Um you know who used to have Moxie too was Cade McNown. And look at what happened to him. 
I, I think he's got more than Moxie. I, I think he's a. I think he can be a good quarterback, but it's just such a bad situation. <laughs> Um, I, I do think he, his arrival was great for George Pickens. You saw what Pickens did with Kenny Pickett. Like yeah. 70 of his 100 yards came with Pickett. So yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm down with that. This might be a disaster of a season for the Steelers, but if Pickett's going to get Pickens going, it might be bad for Deontay Johnson. Brian, we've had some good numbers with Pickett too. Pickett, Pickens, and Picks. <laughs> Brian Hoyer also left. Another quarterback went down. Brian Hoyer left in the first quarter with a concussion. Bailey Zappi. Um, I, I mean, I wouldn't say he did a nice job. He didn't do much, but they hung in there. They lost the final moments in overtime at Green Bay. DK Metcalf was carted off the field for apparently a bathroom break. Wow, that's that is first that's living. <laughs> didn't Paul Pierce do that once? They carried. Oh, they put him in a wheelchair, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that was right to use the can. Yeah. 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 Jahan I asked our to- editor RJ if they could get me a, a cart here. To take me to the bathroom whenever I needed to go. He said, should we get two because you go so much? I said, no, nah, never mind. <laughs> Jahan Dotson left with a hamstring injury. Kenny Galladay, knee injury. Noah Brown, neck injury. Justice Hill left with an injury. Johnu Smith left with an injury. Any interest in Hunter Henry next week against the Lions? No. Johnu Smith is out? Okay. Quintez Cephas, Lions receiver. He left with an injury. Minnesota starting, well, no, Minnesota safety, Louis, Louis Seen, rookie uh, mostly a special teams guy. He's barely played on defense, but he was carted off with a bad injury in the in that London game early on. Mark Ingram and Chris Olave left, but they both came back. Darius Slay, actually two pretty big injuries for the Eagles. Cornerback Darius Slay and left tackle Jordan Maialata, both left. It, based on what I read, it seems like Maialata's is a bigger concern. Slay said he's fine. They're at Arizona next week. And I'm not going to read any more of the injury. The Giants had actually three pretty big injuries, too. Two starting defensive backs plus right tackle Evan Neal. The Cowboys are hoping Evan Neal can make it back for their game on Thanksgiving. LOL. It's not funny. That's pretty funny. And Shaq Leonard left after helmet-to-helmet contact. He suffered. Uh, it was evaluated for a concussion. I don't know if he officially suffered one. But Sha- Shaquille Leonard missed the first three games, finally came back, left with a uh, head injury. Oh, and Zach Martin left with an injury. Dallas. Not uh, even uh, a word about... My guy Isaiah McKenzie. Did yeah, he Isaiah McKenzie left too. Sorry about that. I was trying to speed get rid of the sad. Ball. He scored another touchdown. Yeah. He yeah. seems to be evolving in this Bills offense. Maybe if he misses time, Gabe Davis can get going. There you go. All right. Winners and losers. Heath, your winners are Russell Wilson, 30 fantasy points, Devin Singletary, and Brees Hall, who you already talked about. But tell me about Devin Singletary, who was only started in 30% of leagues. And Russell Wilson started in 62% of leagues. The Bills sent a lot of signals that they wanted to throw the ball to their running backs more this offseason. They tried to go get J.D. McKissick and failed. They drafted James Cook. They kept Zach Moss. And mostly because Devin Singletary had been one of the worst pass-catching running backs in NFL history over the last three years. Um, But he always ran a lot of routes. And early in the season, they tried throwing to Moss. They tried to get Cook involved. The last two weeks, it's just been the Devin Singletary show. And that might change again. That's kind of been the Bills' MO. But for now, I feel pretty comfortable starting Devin Singletary in Week 5 against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And how about Russell Wilson? You feel like he's Russell Wilson? He looked pretty good today, didn't he? This was also a roller coaster one. Because I sent this in the second quarter after he threw his second touchdown, I think. Um, and then he went through a stretch of a quarter of play where I think they gained 20 yards. And then he threw a, a long t- a long pass and ran it in from the two-yard line, and so everything was good again. Um, he's I, looked mobile, though. Yeah, I know you were concerned about his mobility. I, he's moving. He seems to be moving well the last couple he, weeks. He, he had 24 yards on the ground today, so include, or 29, including a touchdown. Um one of my believe it or not is that he's that. wait don't don't but, scoff at that that's good yeah be, one of the believe it or nots I had was he's back because they must start quarterback yeah you, you believe him yeah I'm not sure he's must start but I think he's top twelve for sure okay and Brees Hall another nice game for him and seems to be really grabbing the reins of that job. Uh, Dave's winners are J.K. Dobbins. He scored two touchdowns. He had four catches. Adam Thielen, 72 yards at New Orleans or in, in London. 
uh, on nine targets and George Pickens, who you briefly discussed. But J.K. Dobbins, Adam Thielen, and George Pickens, Dave. I wanted Josh Jacobs instead of George Pickens. I'm glad oh, you look at your right. text. Thank you about Sorry. that, Adam. But it's okay. I, you know what? What's wrong with having four winners? Well, Josh More Jacobs winners on the graphic. On the Tom, Thomas got your got your message. Yeah, Thomas is cool. Adam Adam's only good for lopsided trades in your favor. So <laughs> thank you for that, Adam. Just a real quick point on Brees Hall. 12 of 16 snaps on third and fourth downs. All five of the snaps inside the 10. And he played two-thirds of the snaps. He's um, arrived. So feel good about Brees Hall. So everybody. that doesn't count plays that were called back because of penalty, right? Right. I think Michael Carter had a one yard rush touchdown that was then called back because of a pre snap penalty. That oh, sucks for him. That. I don't remember them, but take your word for that. Hmm. Uh, Dobbins played seven of nine snaps inside the 10 for Baltimore. He had five touches and two touchdowns. That's pretty good. Looks like he's back, maybe not all the way, but he's, he's on the right track. And I feel good about him. Good matchups coming up. He's got the Giants in his future. I think we can say the Browns are a favorable matchup. And before he plays them at Cincinnati, Cincinnati should be a pretty decent matchup for him. So I'm happy with Dobbins. I'm really happy with Adam Thielen. He's racking up the targets now. It's three straight games with at least seven and eight for 72 against the Saints. He's going to have that chemistry with Kirk Cousins in the red zone again. And I just I love what I'm seeing from him. He did get a little messed up late in the game. He looks like he played through an ankle injury. My hope is that he's fine. So Thielen, look for him. He's going to be good as at least a flex play moving forward. Uh, Jacobs, two straight weeks with lots and lots of numbers, especially through the air. You love to see that. He dominated playing time for the Raiders. He ran well earlier this year. He just wasn't getting a ton of opportunities. Now he's getting those valuable opportunities that we're looking for. And I talked about Pickens and how he had a lot of numbers uh, in the second half with Kenny Pickett in the game against the Jets. Maybe that was the Jets a little bit. But still, eight targets, six catches, 102 yards. Best game for any uh, any Steelers receiver today. It's a positive. Mm-hmm. Would you guys rather have Josh Jacobs or Brees Hall rest of season? I think Hall's more fun. Hmm. I'd probably say Jacobs. Would you rather have Josh Jacobs or A.J. Dillon? Jacobs for sure. Yes. Miles Sanders. I, I almost... I, I, I almost wanted to say they feel like the same guy, but Jacobs has been getting those targets. Jacobs. I think I'd say Jacobs as well. Josh Jack Jacobs or Najee Harris? Oh. Ooh. Has he fallen that far? He might have. I hate that schedule for Pittsburgh. Well, I think part of it's Josh Jacobs has risen that much as well. Sure. Like yeah. They've met. Sure. They've crossed paths going opposite directions. Josh Jacobs yeah, has. I bet if you if you've enjoyed Josh Jacobs for the last couple of weeks, I don't think you'd want to turn him into Najee. He has 81 or more total yards in three straight games. That's that's really good. It's good, yeah. <sighs> that's no, I mean, I mean the the winning factor is that he's getting targets. He scored this week a bunch of times. I mean, he's he's getting used like a true number one. All right, time for losers. Dave's losers are Antonio Gibson, who had. Uh, 63 total yards at Dallas, and Brian Robinson awaits. James Conner, who had uh, his best game in terms of total yards, 77 total yards, his first game with more than 57, but it's just a struggle for James Conner. And yeah, Dalton Schultz, terrible. who we already talked about. So, Dave, let's talk about Gibson and James Conner. What do you think about them rest of season? I would try and uh, – Gibson, try and sell low because once Robinson comes back, and I think they started phasing him out today. We saw Jonathan Williams get carries. And guess what? Jonathan Williams did better with his carries than Gibson did. And I also thought that J.D. McKissick was getting more carries in the first half. So they might they might phase out Gibson entirely when Brian Robinson is ready to join the team. I'm not saying he's going to be ready to go week five. I'm not sure if the commanders know if he'll be ready to go week five. And even if he is ready to go in week five, the offensive line is not doing a great job. So I'm I'm, I'm nervous about just how good Brian Robinson will be but once he does get his legs under him and he starts to understand what the speed of the NFL game is like and all that stuff, Gibson might get you a don't. He might be inactive. I, I don't see him being very helpful for fantasy managers by the time we get to, say, Halloween. Um, Connor just looks terrible. This is an offense that's going to live and die with Kyler Murray every single week. Connor doesn't do much in the doesn't do enough in the passing game. I'm I've got him on a couple of teams. I'm going to try and move them while I can. Oh, they play the Eagles next week. 
So nice, easy matchup for James Conner next week. Forget about it. Uh, Saints two weeks after that. Yeah, they do have Seattle twice in the next five games. Seattle might might be that great. I mean, I, Seattle and Detroit, honestly, are the two opponents right now that I look for for running backs. Just really, really. Does he play Detroit two times? No, we two? play Seattle two times. So I right. Mean, well, I mean, if 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 just if he had a consistent rotation of Seahawks and Lions in his schedule, then I'd feel a lot better about James Conner. It really doesn't matter. It's not like he's going to tear it up. You know, it's just has he fallen behind uh, Josh Jacobs and. Oh yeah, yeah. Miles Sanders. Yeah, I think yep. so. How about how about uh, Najee Harris or James Conner? Najee. Yeah, he's the less crappy of the two. Not more like Najee. Like not okay. Najee. Uh, Heath's losers are Amari Cooper, Kyle Pitts, and Terry McLaurin. Anything else you want to say about Cooper or Pitts? Um. I just think Cooper's that boom bust number three wide receiver, and it's really hard. It's it's what Tyler Lockett was to a lot of people for many years, and you're probably just going to start him because he's going to have some good weeks. Um, maybe you wait a, a couple more weeks, hope a couple go bad, and then try to buy him super cheap because down the stretch with Deshaun Watson, he might be a league winner. Yeah. Terry McLaurin had... Started out with three decent games, 12.2 to 16.2 PPR fantasy points in each game. Total dud against the Cowboys, two catches for 15 yards. And uh, what do you think about McLaurin? I just don't like the fact, I mean, he's it, it's really difficult to call him the number one wide receiver for the Commanders. This was like his targets for the year, four in week one, eight in week two, nine in week three, six in this game. So we expect he's seven... Seven targets a game going forward? Maybe. And that wouldn't... He, he's got 27 through four weeks. You'd like him to see more than that. Um, Samuel's the, got 10 more than he does. What about the Jahan Dotson injury? Is that... Jahan Dotson's barely being targeted, just in the valuable places. Yeah. I don't yeah, like the fact that when they get down to the goal line, Carson Wentz is looking for him and not for Terry McLaurin. The rest of season, McLaurin or Jerry Judy. I think I go Judy. I think it's I think it's Judy, but it's close. And it depends on what's up with Dotson's injury. McLaurin or Gabe Davis, Rashad Bateman. McLaurin. Uh, maybe Davis, McLaurin, Bateman. I might do that. Listen, if, and going back to Brian Robinson, if he gets rolling, this team is not throwing nearly as much. And that would hurt McLaurin, too. I really... I really have a hard time believing, like, unless Brian Robinson is Derrick Henry or Jonathan Taylor, that a running back is going to have a great impact on how well Washington runs the football. I got not that Antonio Gibson's perfect by any stretch, but it's just they're not a good running team. They don't have a good setup to be a good running team. Well, they don't have a good runner, so we don't really know. Yeah. I think maybe, maybe and, I just think that the talent level of the runner is the, not the part of the equation that's keeping Washington from being good at running the football. No, I, I get where you're coming from on that. But as far as a two down runner goes, he looks he looks the part. He look, or I should say he looked the part in the preseason. And I know that all the reports from camp were were eye opening. The people who cover the commander said that he looked really, really good. So there, there's obviously a huge adjustment that he's going to have to make from being um, I don't know if he was exactly a part-time back at Alabama last year or his last year there, but I, I think he's going to get an opportunity and that's what everybody's banking on. And if you're getting an opportunity, then at some point you're probably going to do fairly well with the opportunity. If you're young and you've got fresh legs, I'm uh, I'm cautiously optimistic. Plus like he'd be a great story. This isn't the real reason like why you'd want to use him, but he's going to be a great story when he does have a big game. I guess so, but there's a lot to ask of somebody who basically has had, he's been off for so long. He's a rookie. Now, it's a lot to ask, right. but it could be more I, of I think a detriment I, to Antonio Gibson than anything else. Well, if it, that would be the biggest detriment, but also if he does, I, I preface it. I said, if he gets rolling, yeah, and maybe it's win, and he might not get rolling until week 10. We just don't know how quickly he'll get up to speed. There's a chance he doesn't even get made active for week five. Are right, you ready? Ready to go through the games? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. 
Minnesota 28, New Orleans 25. A thriller in London, Heath. Yes. Believe it or not, if Alvin Kamara misses more time, Latavius Murray is the back to start, not Mark Ingram. I don't believe it. I don't know if there's even a back that I would want to start. I feel like Murray got going, A, because he had an opportunity. Ingram left for a little bit of time. And B, just because he had fresh legs. We saw this guy last year. He was terrible. You're telling me he's going to average right around five yards per carry every week? I'm I'm not believing it at all. Yeah, I don't believe it. I think Ingram will be the starter. He's, they, yeah, I think he's ahead yeah. of him, and that's it. You know who might be their best runner is Taysom Hill. Yeah. Um. Okay. Anything else from this game here? How about? Do we, are we okay with Cousins against Chicago next week? He's Is been it prime time, or <laughs> I didn't think morning games count as prime time. <laughs> it, well, it was prime time in London, was it? Actually, I don't know what time it was there. I think it was. Yeah, he got. Off, I don't think it was. I think it was an afternoon game there. Um, he got off to a really good start in the game at the early touchdown to Madison, and you're just thinking, all right. It's going to be a three-score game for Cousins, and then it ended up not being a three-score game for Cousins. I'm probably going to have him as a top-12 quarterback against Chicago. And one thing I, I want to talk about is, <clears throat> I don't know if it's a now conversation. Um, Derrick Henry obviously had a really good game. But when, looking at these guys, you know, one of the storylines we were following uh, going into the year was the, the kind of aging of the running backs. And do we still think Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, Derrick Henry, maybe Austin Eckler, do we still think that they're stars or are they past their prime? Because Cook is getting a ton of work, man. And he's been fine, but just kind of waiting for him to go off. And it, it hasn't happened yet for a guy who's had 17 or more carries in three or four games. I think he's been pretty disappointing. I, he, he's scored what? He scored once this year. Um, I don't know. I, when you when you think about these guys, do you still expect them to be the superstars that they used to be, or are we holding out a little bit too much hope for them? I think it's unfair to put Derrick Henry in this group. Henry He's been awesome the last two weeks. He has, but he certainly wasn't the first two games. Yeah, but I'm I'm happy to have Derrick Henry on my fantasy team now. Whereas after week two, I was like, ooh, I don't know. Don't know if he's going to be so good. I'd like to table this till next week because hmm. – Cook in a much more favorable matchup against Chicago. He should be able to have a nice big game there. I, to Adam's point, these guys, the matchup isn't supposed to matter if they're who they were. Yeah, I okay. could understand maybe a, a cup, a few matchups against the best of the best, which at times has been New Orleans, you know, and that's who Cook played today. But he had, yeah, look, yeah, he had 17 carries, 96 yards, and a touchdown against Detroit. That is awesome. But it wouldn't have shocked me if like Dalvin Cook in his prime had 150 and two touchdowns against Detroit. You know what I mean? So uh, I don't want to pick, I don't want to be nitpicking or anything. I'm just wondering if these running backs are the same players they used to be. But again, we can have that conversation. I, I, I think I, just one thing to point towards you, Adam, you can look at the dynasty rankings and these guys are for the most part, not top 12 running backs anymore. And they're moving closer to 24 in the dynasty mm -hmm. ranking. So, the, yes, the end is coming. And with a couple of them, it's looked like it may be approaching this year. At Buffalo 23 and Baltimore 20, this was supposed to be the game of the week. It was the reign of the week. Uh, so I, I, I just came up with that. I'm sorry, folks. but And it's not even the right game to call the reign of the week. I yeah, this was the lame of the week. It was fine. I mean, it came down to a last-second field goal, but it was a fantasy dud. All right, what do we got, Heath? Um, believe it or not, J.K. Dobbins is going to be a top 20 running back rest of season. I feel good about that. I'm going to believe yeah, that. I, top 20 is a, it's, if you had said 24, it would have been a fist pump. Yes. Top 20, I think is still a yes. I think I believe it. I'm really encouraged by the usage. What do you think, Heath? I think I believe it too. I think maybe the, the helpful thing in determining this would be, Rank J.K. Dobbins, James Conner, Najee Harris, and Ezekiel Elliott rest of the season. Right. I think he'd yeah. have to be at the top of that list. I am tempted I mean, to say the top of the list, but if 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 we knew the schedule, if we didn't know the schedule for Najee, I bet we'd all say Najee's at the top of the list. And I, I wonder not. if the schedule is just as bad for Baltimore as it is for Pittsburgh. They're in the same division, so it's not like I mean I can run off their next five games. You tell me. But it's Cincinnati, the Giants, the Browns, the Bucks, the Saints. That doesn't sound like the next five games for the, Najee. No, 
And the difference is when they play good defenses, we still expect them to score 24 to 34 points because they have Lamar Jackson. When the Steelers yeah. play a good defense, they might score one touchdown. We haven't um, seen an efficient game from Dobbins yet either. That efficiency should spike just by virtue of him playing with Lamar Jackson. Well, okay, so they are so talking about the schedules here. Uh, we're worried about the Buffalo game. Well, they are Baltimore already played Buffalo. Uh, Tampa Bay. I think Philadelphia is on Pittsburgh's schedule, but not Baltimore's schedule. So there's that. All right, that's the J.K. Dobbins version. Uh, I'm assuming no inter- no concerns for Mark Andrews. Just just no you know, point. just a bad game for passing. Um, it, you know, wasn't great. And Devin Duvernay, any interest in him? He is 38% rostered. He led the team. I think he led the team in receiving with 51 his, yards. His, he did. His long catch of 21 was a total fluke. Did Mark Andrews get an play. assist on that at least? Like a half a fantasy point? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe the Bills defense oh. should have been given an assist on that play too. Uh, all right. I think we're good there. Uh, game of the week, Giants 20, Bears 12. Well on our way to six and two Giants before flaming out and earning the 13th pick in the draft. Uh, believe it or not, Saquon Barkley is the number one running back in fantasy. Trying to think of other candidates off the top of my head. Cub. Is he ahead of Derrick Henry? Is he ahead I mean, of Nick Chubb? had 25 points today. Yeah, but if, if we're redrafting right now, is he not the number one overall pick? Would be Cooper Taylor. Cup's the number one overall pick. Okay, is he the number two overall pick? Yeah, it was this Mark Andrews last worst. week. But... You know, maybe you think about <laughs> Chubb. Maybe you think about Chubb, but I, I don't think it would have been Chubb going into this week. Anyway, he had 33 so. touches today. Yeah, I love I it. I love that they're using like them. That. I don't love that. I don't love that at all. Well, I love it for fantasy. I know you don't love it because you're. No, I don't like fantasy either. Fantasies I think about them making the playoffs. 22 to 25 touches should be enough. I, I think you, you can't run a guy who's had that many injuries into the ground like that. It's it's reckless. He's not uh, on the team next year, right? Right. Probably not. But, you know, so. for fantasy anyway, I, I, I don't want him to get that many touches. Uh, look at if you go back and you look at Joe Mixon last year, he had two games in a row where he had like 30 carries or averaged about that. And he stunk after that and he's continued to stink. But it was a turning point in the season. He just wasn't as good. I don't know if that's a coincidence or not, but man, I don't want my running back getting that much work. I really don't. I mean, Derrick Henry got hurt last year for the first time in his career, basically. And he was getting like 30 touches a game. It's it's too much. Uh, I don't know that they'll do it every week, but obviously they had no passing game this week. I, you know, the thing is that Giants have had such an easy schedule. and I don't know if the Packers' run defense is very good. They haven't looked at very the last two weeks. No, uh, just they're such a bad offense, the Giants. So you wonder, I mean, would you rather have a guy like Austin Eckler? Uh, would you rather, ha- you know, on, on the Chargers, would you rather have Chubb? Uh, he's obviously in the discussion. I don't, I don't know that it really matters. Um, but it's a good question. Really so is that a believe it or a not? Uh all right, I fine. think he is their yeah. offense. Okay. I think he's their offense. They're using him the way that we want him to be used. You can't complain about workload. Just, I'm just, just, like, just go I, take him. If you had a, your running back, your fantasy running back, how many touches do you want out of him per week? Especially as many as he can get. All of them. I don't want that many. Okay, then I don't know what you're looking for when you play. I'm looking for 20, 25 touches. That's a ton. I don't want 30 plus. That he's not. Oh, I know. So many times. Oh, it'd be so bad if they give me 146 yards. Who can hold up on that? Who can hold up on that uh, workload? It's insane. No, I get it. I get what you're coming from on that, but you might as well ride it while you can. I don't want to ride it while I can. I want it to last the whole season. Darnell Mooney. Because you want your team to make the playoffs. That's no, it has. Uh, Dave, I swear to God, this has nothing to do with the Giants. This has to do with fantasy. I don't want my fantasy running back getting 33, 31 carries. It's too many. Uh, you know, uh, anyway, Darnell Mooney, 4% started, goes off for 94 yards, only five targets. Or five, uh, yeah, five targets. Five targets, four catches. Yeah. It's good. He had all of teams. Justin Fields' stats for a huge portion of this game. What do you do with that? What do you do with that information? You pick him up if he's available. Oh, you make every like every team in the league is getting a Darnell Mooney trade offer. Look what he just did. He had 13 points. You could use this on your team. He gets the Vikings next. <laughs> Who's your week? kicker? It's only 63% <laughs> roster. Would you, 
pick him up or you know would you add him? You think he should be more ro- rostered in more leagues? Darnell Mooney. Sure, as a bench receiver, I don't I don't know if there's any harm in putting him on your bench and seeing what happens next. He's got Minnesota, Washington, and then it gets a little tougher. It's the Patriots, the Cowboys, the Dolphins, but there's matchups down the line against the Lions, the Falcons, the Jets. He's got some favorable matchups down the way. Yes, I would like him on my fantasy team. Uh, Cleveland and Atlanta. Atlanta 23, Cleveland 20. Atlanta had the ball for just 24 minutes and 16 seconds. Heath, what do we got? Uh, I've got two. It's actually the same thing. We just have to change the name. Believe it or not, Kyle Pitts should be benched until further notice. Yeah. <sighs> no, I I don't know. This is I, I feel like the answer should be yes, but <laughs> there, there's the second half of that equation, which is, all right, who are you starting at tight end instead? Joku? Yeah. yeah, maybe Najoku. It depends on the type of defense they play. Tyler I, I really think the scheme, the scheme of the defense that they go up against week to week matters for Najoku. Um, so is that a yes or no? I thought you were giving the other name too. I, I would there's there's not I'm not benching Kyle Pitts. Okay. Like is my other option Ever. Austin Hooper? No, your other option is Tyler Conklin. Tyler Conklin. No, I'm not benching um, Kyle Pitts. Um, I might believe it or not, Kareem Hunt computer. should be benched until further notice. I did do that in a few leagues this week. To me, he's kind of bi weeky. Yeah, he's starting to fall to that range. Do we know how many? I know how many snaps inside the 10 he had, or at least I can assume he had no, he had two of four snaps inside the 10, which means Chubb had the other two. He played 11 of 17 snaps on third and fourth downs, theoretically, in a game that the Browns are playing behind in. He might out snap Chubb. They they did lose this game. They did, but how often were they playing from behind? Like, you know, chasing points down more than one score. Does uh, that well, happen next week against the Chargers? Who knows of the Chargers? I gotta tell you guys something that seems like Ian Rappaport tweeting that it is feared that Javante Williams has a serious knee injury. He'll yeah. have an MRI yeah. tomorrow. So yeah. I don't think it's a huge surprise, that. unfortunately. But uh, he oh. was ruled out immediately. It didn't look very good. I I think it is bad. Hey, um, anything else in this game? I don't know what happened with Patterson. We're hoping to get more information on that. He did get you a touchdown, nine carries, thirty-eight yards, and a touchdown. We already talked about Amari Cooper. Any concerns on Drake London here? It's now look at his yards in four games: seventy-four, eighty-six, fifty-four, seventeen. So I don't know if that's a concern to you. Drake London was started in 78% of leagues. He's still ahead of Amari Cooper and Gabe Davis and Rashad Bateman. We may have pushed him a little, him and Garrett Wilson both into the top 24 a little too soon, but they're still very high end number three wide receivers is my take. Is it, is it at least encouraging that he had seven targets on on 19 passes from his team? Yeah. So that's a hell of a target share. I, there's a reason that I put Kyle Pitts as a loser and not Drake London. Sure. Right. I feel better about London still. I do too. It's still loser ish that he only had two catches for 17 yards, but I don't think it's going to be enough to make people seriously pause about sitting him. Unless maybe they sat him for a Seahawks receiver, somebody like that sat right. him for Dobbs. And now they've got to make a decision on that next week. They just blindly go right back to London. Philadelphia 29 and Jacksonville 21. Uh, Philadelphia had the ball for almost 40 minutes. Go ahead. This was. In the believe it or not, but I didn't do it because they scored some points later, but it's about the Eagles and not the Cardinals, so I want to use it here. Believe it or not, you should bench all your Cardinals next week against the Eagles because their defense is just that good. I don't want to use Connor. I I will still start Marquise Brown. I would have lowered expectations for him. What if Slay's healthy? Uh, Yeah, lowered expectations, but I would start him. Probably the same thing with Kyler as well. Well, there's no way I'm sitting Zach Ertz. Just you can't. Oh yeah, yeah. that's another yeah, one. He's just a tight end. Revenge game. Yeah, true. Uh, boy, the yeah, the Eagles are really good. I think time of possession was just a huge factor here, though. As I mentioned, Jaguars had the ball for 20 minutes. Yeah, uh, I'm. Not, I have one lead with Kyler Murray Heath, and I'm not looking for other options. You know, I'm not going to Jared Goff or something like that. He's he, yeah. This was more about the Eagles defense than them. We'll, we'll get to them later. He's he's bordering his way to a top twelve season. <laughs> um, believe it or not, Miles Sanders is a top 
20 running back the rest of the season. Does he does he play enough to be a top 20 running back on a on a week to week basis? Oh my gosh, yes, he's a top 20 running back. Just that's the only thing stopping him now is does he get banged up? Does he pull a hamstring? Yeah. Also, look, he's got he's averaging two catches per game. He has eight catches in four games. Mm-hmm. And he's not the goal line guy. I mean, I think he's more likely than the others, but Gainwell was in there inside the 10 yard line a little bit too much for my liking. In fact, he had a touchdown from that range. So he doesn't have that role where just everyone comes off the field for Miles Sanders and he's that touchdown guy. And then obviously there's Hertz. Um, but he is going to basically be the king of the, of the, one of the kings of the RB dead zone. He was one of the last ones drafted in there, and he's going to be one of the best ones to come out of it. Seems anyway. Um, okay. All right. All good. And uh, Chargers tw- 34, Houston 24. Um, I, it's tough to know what to take from this game, but there's two of them. Believe it or not, everything's fine with Austin Eckler. Yeah, believe it. I don't know. I, I mean, yeah. What's to not know? Well, uh, it was a great matchup. I, I, Khalil you know Herbert what? just ran for 180 yards against this team. Everything's fine, except I just don't have the same expectations that I did. You know, I have I feel that way for almost every running back. What is, right. So I feel like you're just gun shy on the running backs. But what yeah. does a guy have to do to make you feel better about him? Three do touchdowns. Team. Do it against a different team. It's obviously a great game, and okay. I never told anyone to even consider sitting him. Well, of course not, and that's we shouldn't even waste the time. His next three games, Browns, Broncos, Seahawks. Believe I'm it or good. not, Gerald Everett is a start, even if Keenan Allen comes back next week. No. I, I think he's I think he's a candidate to start. I do not think he's a must-start. So, too quick. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, like you're just – I can't sit Kyle Pitts. I can't start Gerald Everett. No, I'm thinking about – I would think about something like that. It's a hell of a lot easier to do if there's no Keenan Allen. Oh, if there's no Keenan oh, Allen. Yeah. Gerald Everett needs to be ranked ahead of Kyle Pitts next week. Agreed. This week, I had Kyle Pitts like seventh in the projections, and I just moved him up. Him and Dallas Goddard both because I thought it looked dumb how low they were. I didn't want to have him behind Pat Fryermuth and Gerald Everett and TJ Hawkinson. Next yeah, week, he's going to be below like all three of those guys. Mm-hmm. Who is? Pitts? Pitts. Yeah. All right, fine. I think Everett's still a starter at tight end. It's tight. Even when Keenan Allen comes back? Yeah, I mean, he's done enough. I'm not going to just, I'm obviously not going to drop him. You he, know, he's having success with the targets he's getting, and Jared Cook got 85 targets in this offense. So if he's just more efficient than Jared Cook and gets the same role as Jared Cook, he's going to be a top 12 tight end. Nice. I'm just game. worried about what that share is going to be when, when Allen's there. It's the only worry I got. Brandon Cook, seven catches, 57 yards, and a touchdown. That was nice to see. I was very disappointed in Josh Palmer. I, he's This is a terrible game. One did call, he uh, leave at one point? I think he did. I thought he, he did, came too. Back. Oh, I hope he left for I don't a know while. how long he was out for, but I know he left for a while. Okay. Um, yeah, not, it's hard to explain such a bad game when he's been pretty good when Keenan Allen's been out. All right, Tennessee, Tennessee 24, Indianapolis 17. I guess we should do the same thing we just did with Austin Eckler. Everything's fine with Derrick and Henry, and there's nothing to worry about. He took advantage. Well, we can't say this was a favorable matchup. No. And he did a lot of damage before Shaquille Leonard got hurt. Yeah. He's got the commanders next week. Oh, I, I'm, uh, yeah. I believe it. He, nothing's, yeah. Everything's fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm real good with Derrick Henry. I mean, everything's fine. Again... I don't have the same expectations that I did. Do you have good expectations for anyone? No, Not really. He's becoming a running back hater. <laughs> Probably like, because I hate myself so much right he, now. That's no, really he, just he hates running running backs. backs. He doesn't want running backs to get too many carries. He doesn't have high expectations for the running backs who score three touchdowns. Ooh. In the case of Derrick Henry, two. I, no, it's not. It's not all of that. It's just that I, I, I just don't look. The offensive line is bad. Like, this is think about the situation for Derrick Henry. The offensive line is bad. It used to be great. Now it's bad. Um, he's older. You know, he's he's older than most great running backs are. It's hard, you know you don't find a ton of running backs. It's hard to finish top five at age twenty eight. It's it very rarely happens. 
Um, I don't know. It's just it's not as good of a situation. But I'm never taking him out of my lineup, and he's going to get a lot of work. And I love the fact that they're giving him catches the last two games. Yeah, that's awesome. He had a couple of drops today, though. That that part was not cool. His schedule's great the rest of the way. Uh, believe it or not, Robert Woods is a number three receiver. Bench receiver, so I don't believe that. Good bye week replacement when we get there a couple weeks from now. All right. Dallas 25, Washington 10. Um, Man, <laughs> believe it or not, the Cowboys can win a game by two scores and neither Ezekiel Elliott or Tony Pollard are any good. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> kind of hard to believe that, but it is true. That did happen. Um, I don't know what to do with these guys at all. No idea. With with who, which guys? Both guys on both teams? With Ezekiel Elliott and with Tony Pollard. Like next week, I'm going to come up with a that wheel that Adam had, and it's going to have numbers like 18 through 32. And I'm just going to spin it twice. The first time will be for Zeke, and the second time will be for Pollard. And that's where I'm going to rank them. That's awesome. It's mind-boggling that Powell, Pollard goes from the game that he just had to single-digit rushing yards. Single-digit total yards. It's the second game he's had like this this season. Makes you wonder uh, how good he could actually be. I'm making the wheel right now, so just keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is, I mean, you know, you could be more encouraged maybe about Zeke and say, okay, listen, I, you know, Dak's coming back. Probably in two weeks, maybe next week. Zeke's still getting more of the work. Oh, yeah. Maybe there's some sleeper potential there for him. How about his schedule? Do you care to know it? Well, no, I would like for you to to, to address what I said, actually, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> um, you know, do you feel uh, I'm gonna way? tell you that you're not gonna want to start Ezekiel Elliott weeks five and six. Um both on the road against the Rams and the Eagles. It's hard to answer your what you said, Adam, when we were too busy thinking about what we were gonna say to listen to you. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Look, I Zach Martin left. Did, did Zach Martin come back after he got hurt? Dave, what did Adam say? I don't even know who Adam <laughs> is. If Zach Martin's out, that really hurts you out. He's their best lineman. And now I'm two sorry, tough Adam. matchups coming up. It's you know okay. what? Zeke is a is a sell for what you can. Spin it for Zeke. All right, we're spinning. Uh, this is the Zeke and Pollard wheel. Let's go ahead. Can you see it? Yes. All right, we're spinning the wheel. What am I? Oh, I like the sound effect. Yeah. RB28. 28 for Zeke. All right, what's Pollard going to be next week? Let's spin it for Pollard. Tony Pollard next week is... Sounds like Ooh. something out of South Park. RB19. Wow. Okay. Okay. That's Big week uh, for Tony Pollard. Big week. All right, cool. Seattle 48 and Detroit 45. Bonanza. Believe it or not, Jamal Williams does have one ounce of talent in his body. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, I believe that. Let's do something He's, different, though. He's got um, plenty of talent. No, believe it or not, Geno Smith can support both DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett as starting fantasy wide receivers. Believe it. This isn't the first game this year where he's done it. His third really straight it. game that's good for Tyler Lockett. You don't believe it, do you, Adam? No. No, but you should. He's playing great. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Did somebody tickle That was heat? the most ridiculous touchdown I've ever seen in my life. So, you know, I was thinking about this because we were talking about Carson Wentz a few weeks ago. And my argument against Wentz was Sam Darnold in 2021. He throws for 300 yards or 297 or more yards each of the first three weeks or four weeks or something like that. And then he falls apart. There was another example that I thought of Ryan Fitzpatrick in 2018. He threw for 400 yards in each of his first three games. And then he, just like Darnold last year, got benched and lost his job. That's not going to happen with Geno. But ultimately, I just don't trust Gino. I just don't trust trust Jacoby Brissett. And then it's a question of how long before we do. Dave, you obviously do. I, I don't think that. Brissett belongs in this conversation at all. Well, he was supporting Amari Cooper, and he was supporting David Njoku, and this week he was not supporting Amari Cooper at all. Is the conversation about whether or not he can help the receivers play well, or is the conversation about him being a streamable slash bi week quarterback? The conversation is whether he can make DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett both starting fantasy wide receivers. I think he can do it in PPR pretty easily. 
I think he can be okay in half. An I hour. would say that at best, one of them will finish top 24 next week against New Orleans. Yeah. Probably DK Metcalf is about ready to go through a slump because he faces New Orleans and then he faces Arizona. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, and then he faces the Chargers and J.C. Jackson. I, I thought he was going to get slowed by Okuda, and he crushed Okuda today. He had yeah. two very long completions on him. I didn't, you know, I didn't catch much of it, but number one was guarding him when I saw he had two huge plays. So he uh, was like Okuda Donata. <laughs> you know what Donata means, right? I do know what it means. Yes, yes. that was a good one, right? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Thank you. That was AP Spanish. How about Josh Reynolds is a off the waiver wire into a lineup fantasy wonder. Yeah, he, he Chris and I got into a screaming match about Josh Reynolds this morning. Oh, that's pathetic. Believe it or not, Josh Reynolds will matter three weeks from now. Believe it or not, I had Josh Reynolds ahead of Cooper Cup in that draft class. Well, looking good so far this week. <laughs> uh, I don't think he's going to matter when the modern St. Brown comes. I agree. No. All right, uh, next game, Jets 24, Pittsburgh 20. Believe it or not, Zach Wilson is going to ruin Garrett Wilson's fantasy value. And Elijah Moore's? No, nope, just Garrett Wilson's. Elijah, yeah, Moore didn't I, ha- Elijah Moore didn't have any fantasy value. Adam, <laughs> Adam dropped him today for Josh Reynolds. Yeah, I think Great you're going to start to see Elijah Moore get dropped in a bunch of leagues. I kind of believe it. I don't. Why not? I, well, first off, I think Garrett Wilson's too good. Second off, Zach Wilson looked really off. I watched that game mostly in the early game because I wanted to really see Zach Wilson and Mitchell Trubisky. Um, but he looked awful early. He settled down. He had a couple of nice drives in the second half. Garrett Wilson predominantly plays in the slot. Wilson threw to the slot an above average rate last year. I think that it's eventually going to be okay. He still got six targets in this game. They just didn't connect. I'm not really that worried about Garrett Wilson. If Gabe Davis got six targets, you'd be like, he only had six targets. Um, six that targets might be. He doesn't true. have a quarterback as good as. as <laughs> Although Garrett six Wilson. targets would be Gabe Davis's season high, right? I, yes, yes. Um, I, Zach Wilson, I'm gonna tell you, is the most exciting quarterback in football. Every like, play is. I need to clarify something. It's so fun. I do think that there is a difference between the pedigree and baseline talent of Garrett Wilson and Gabe Davis. That's fine. I agree with that, but I'd much okay. rather have the guy getting ca- catching passes from, you know, one of the best passes. So you'd rather have Gabe Davis than Garrett Wilson rest of season. I didn't say, I didn't mean it to come out that way. Okay. I, you know, if the targets were going to be the same, then yes. I don't know who I'd rather have, honestly. I, I was down on Garrett Wilson. I told people to sit Garrett Wilson. I, you know, maybe got lucky. Good job. But I was nervous about Zach Wilson. I kind of wanted to see how this whole thing would play out. Plus, I knew they weren't going to throw the ball 50 times every game. They came back down to 36 pass attempts. Um, 37. Yeah. 37. Barrios had the touchdown. Yeah, throw to right. Zach right. Wilson. Um, all right. Yeah, I mean, I, who would you rather have, Gabe Davis or Garrett Wilson? Wilson. Dave? If I knew that Gabe Davis's ankle wasn't going to be a problem, I'd say Dave. I don't know if it's going to be a problem or not. All right, guys, let's go. Uh, I know this goes back to what Heath said earlier. Yeah, he played every snap. How bad? Uh, Arizona 26, Carolina 16. Sorry, Davey froze there for a second. Uh, Arizona 26, Carolina 16. Man, we've talked about pretty much everything in this game. We covered the Cardinals in the Eagles, believe it or not. And I don't know what there is to say about the Panthers. Believe it or not, Baker Mayfield had 17 passes batted down his last one <laughs> today. I think it was nine, actually. Because I, I looked and I saw DJ Moore had like 12 or 13 targets. And like, he did not 11. He did not throw the ball to DJ Moore 11 times. Well, four of the times that he threw it to DJ, DJ Moore, it didn't go past the line of scrimmage. They obviously, this was a good game for DJ Moore. They obviously were trying to get him involved. So. Yeah. He only turned it into 11 PPR fantasy points, but um, okay. it was encouraging. Yeah. What do you think about McCaffrey? I, I mean, the, the offense is such a mess. Mayfield is, I don't understand what happened to him. I know he wasn't an amazing quarterback, but this is a bad version of Baker Mayfield. Uh, ben McAdoo McCaff- is doing an awful job. Ben McAdooing an awful job? He is doing a terrible job. McAdooing, terrible. Come on. 
So what do you think about McCaffrey? The nine catches, 81 yards, and a touchdown. That looks like McCaffrey. This is the first game with more than 26 receiving yards, but the rushing, uh, this is a bad rushing game for him after he had a couple of good ones. Um, Dave, what do you think? I think I think McAdoo deserves credit for trying to change things up by giving targets to McCaffrey, by dialing up DJ Moore 11 times. I don't think, I honestly, I think Mayfield's a much bigger problem than McAdoo. I just, they're, they're the routes that they run, they have guys that are running seven yards and just stopping and turning around to the quarterback. Yeah, because their There's, quarterback can't throw accurately further than that on he's a regular not, basis. But, I mean, I, I, I obviously, I, there's no argument to make. He is awful right now. He's playing terribly, but he has not been this bad of a quarterback for his career. This is like, statistically, right. this is a significant drop off from what he's been in the past. Oh gosh, the the throws. I mean, I've seen so many bad throws. I've been watching a lot, uh, you know, of the, of just to see what's going on with DJ Moore. I mean, Baker, Baker Mayfield is horrible. Yeah. Oh. All right, Green Bay twenty-seven, New England twenty-four. What do we got here? I guess we should do this one this week since he led the team in targets. Believe it or not, Alan Lazard is Aaron Rodgers' number one wide receiver rest of season. Man. Yeah, I kind of think he is. I guess he was tied with Dobbs. I'm going to stick with. He Dobbs. was tied with Dobbs, but he had the he had the better PPR game. He had the better non PPR game. Well, Dobbs dropped a 40 yard touchdown that was beautifully beautifully thrown. Dobbs is good. Boy, he can he's good. I agree, but it, it's eventually going to Christian Watson's eventually going to get a chance. He's a running back now, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he was today. No, I'm not saying that Watson should be started anytime soon. I'm going to have a hard time making a decision on whether or not Watson deserves a roster spot in some of my leagues. I'd like to keep him because I think the second half of the year, like I think he could matter in the fantasy playoffs. But until then, I feel better about Lazard than I do Dobbs, but I, I kind of like them both. If I had to pick one, it's Lazard. I never really want to tell people to start a Patriots running back, but you know what? They get a lot of work and and they produce, you know, Harris is a PPR fantasy points in four games for Harris bad in week one. And then 16.7, 12.6, 15.4 in his last three games for a guy who never catches the ball. Believe it or not. Stevenson has played more snaps than him each of the last two weeks. Believe it or not. What Damien is the best Harris running back in fantasy football. (laughs) Wow. Oh, I, not quite. But maybe. <laughs> Dave, we are, just, we are really? burying Najee. I think I'd still rather have Najee. Did, did Najee have a target today? I don't think so. He did not. Man. Jalen Warren had a target. Najee did not. He did have 18 carries. Las Vegas 32, Denver 23. Uh, believe it or not, Melvin Gordon is a must start running back until further notice. Gotta believe it. Believe it or not, Melvin Gordon is a top five running back until further notice. Oh, come on. No. You know, he hasn't really gotten off to a good start, but if I told you for the season, if Javante Williams had a season ending injury in the preseason, I mean, I think he'd be top 12. I would have taken Melvin Gordon in the third round. Well, that actually is one of my believe it or nots. Believe it or not, Josh Jacobs is a top 12 running back rest of the season. I'd believe that before Melvin Gordon is a top 12 running back rest of the season. I'm tempted to take Melvin Gordon there. I I, I guess Mike Boone's probably going to have a role. He absolutely will. And you're you're putting your chips on a, what is he, 29 or 30? Who's already fumbled twice in the red zone this year? That's the thing. He never fumbles. He's not well, having he, a good year so far. That's no, the problem, you know. Oh, he's been awful. Yeah. It, right. If, if if we didn't if we didn't have this stink of of not really playing so well this year, and he you know just coming off of last year for example, and he had mm-hmm. this opportunity, I guess it'd be easier to buy. And plus the Broncos, you know, a bit of a mess. But believe ah. it or not, Patrick Mahomes did a spin move and then threw a jump pass. For a touchdown. I don't believe that. Okay. <laughs> I can't wait to watch I'll find this. out soon, Heath. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, we will talk to you on Monday with Beyond the Box Score. And for Heath and Dave and our producer, Shafee T, I'm Adam. Have a good one. See ya.